JVC DC 33L. I bought this on eBay, uh, not realising that on the back of the unit, it's all in a part at the moment, there is a place there for an external power supply. Well, this didn't come with one. So I attempted using a small little power supply, they're built up with some crocodile clips, put these on the main board, dead as a dodo. Front fascia removal, press the eject button, and if you look inside there, there's a little black screw. That definitely needs to come out, otherwise it isn't coming apart. Take off the tuning knob and the other one up. Take those both off. Then on the bottom, we've got one, two, three screws. And on the top of the unit, there's a screw inside there and a screw inside there. And you'll need some long reach screwdrivers to get into these. We've removed all the screws and the front should now just lift off and it does. That was nice and simple. Next job is to remove the turntable. And there's three on the back. Uh, the most important one is this one. Do this one first. This has a ribbon cable inside it, which needs to be disconnected. Oh, that one's not even connected. So that needs to be pulled out. It's a simple pull. And there's a screw here. And we should now be able to lift the whole thing away. To remove the cassette mechanism if you're going to change the belts, obviously if it's on there, remove the tape counter belt. And there's four screws. There's one there, one there, one under there, and one there. And when you remove that, the unit will drop down. And there's two cables that then go down to connectors on the main board and you can lift the whole module away. If you uh, wish to go any further and start dismantling the tuner section, there's three screws that hold this back place on. There's a screw there, there's a screw underneath this ribbon cable and there's a screw down there. That'll allow this black piece to come away. Um, if you then want to remove the by all of the boards you need to remove these two tuner screws that's a module on its own that slides out and on the speaker there's a further two screws which you need to take those off and that'll allow the main board to slide out once you have removed the cassette deck and behind the cassette deck there is a mechanism for the record, you need to take that off and behind that there's a further screw. I'll show you that once I've removed this. Tape like that just simply lifts out. And the connections on the main board. And just these two and these just simply lift off. The other thing you will need to take off if you're going to take the main board out is this, I believe it's the record mechanism. Once you've removed this cassette record lever I'll take it off and just behind it on the back of the connection socket there's one more screw to remove and then once that's removed then everything can just slide out. And it's quite simple then to remove the, the board comes out as a whole module um, don't want to be careful with the, the wiring on there, I don't want to dis dislodge that too much. And as you can see, it's in need of a good clean. What I've noticed is that fuse down there is blown. So I'm going to have to get the meter out and probe around a little bit and see what I can find the problem is. I think I've got quite a lot of work to do on this unit. But first of all, I think it's got it de-dusted, cleaned up. 
I'm going to take apart. That bottom cog doesn't look right to me, it looks bent. The front just needs to go clean up. Uh, to take the front off, make sure you, get your, you eject the uh, cassette door, otherwise it won't, it won't come off the front. But to be honest, it's one of the simplest ones I've ever taken apart. The whole thing is quite modular and just slides in and out with a couple of screws holding it here and there. And quite a good design, really, for simplicity for changing belts. And we will be doing the belts on the turntable and the cassette deck. But as I say, let's get back to the main board. And I'll just give you a quick overview of this board. Anybody needs it for any such reason. This part's a little bit loose now because you had to remove the screws that held it to the chassis. And at the bottom of the board, let's have a quick look at that. Can't see anything obvious at the moment. Um, but I've got to do a full cleaning and probe around a little bit with the meter and find out what the actual fault is, what that fuse has blown. From the terminals, I'll put the crocodile connectors, positive and negative, trace that through up to the fuse, uh, fuse blown obviously, uh, replace the fuse, then check the power switch and then trace it through to um, Q227 and Q228. Uh, 12 volt was on the one side but no 8 volt on the output, or no 12 volt on the output. Uh, so then we decided to remove those and test them. That reads fine, no problem whatsoever. And it's the same for both transistors. Well, we've tested those, they, they seem to be okay. So then we, I sort of had a probe around on the board and I got some strange readings on D215 and D216. So I've taken those off and we'll give those a test. No, that's not right, is it? It's reading as a 2.18 ohm resistor. So I've tested both Zenas and they're both the same, uh, both faulty. So I think I need to replace those. If I get a just an off the shelf Zener. Got there. Just stick that in, just so you can get a comparison. There you go. That's what it should look like. Okay, so it looks like both centers are blown. Board's been cleaned up. Uh, I just use the air compressor just to clean up. Well, we've done the budge on uh, D215 and 216. Fortunately, I didn't have the right value Zenners. So I've just series linked a few for now, just to test it really. And it does seem to be working now. So that seems to be the problem. I don't know why they blew. I've still got to establish that, yeah. If I put this pants blow back in. You can hear just a little bit of click then. And we've got a little LED on the front there. There should be a light. I'm not sure if you can see that. I can't test the tape. The Tape D tape the the belts are all chewed up inside. I've got to replace the belts on that. Well, my budget works as much as getting it up and running. I've now put the correct Zenas in from my trusty Amazon kit. Everything at the moment um, is in bits, as you can see. The radio is actually working. The cassette is still in bits, waiting for the belts. Turntable has just given me a multitude of problems. Well, mainly these dampening rubbers, as you can see, they're totally perished. I'll show you where those go. These rubbers, as we said, are totally corroded or rotted, whatever the rubber does. And there's four of those, and they're actually on the main deck. There's one here. I'm not going to take it all apart to show you, but there's one there. There's four of them in total. And basically they're attached to this main arm and it just gives it a bit of lift and float. Now unfortunately because they're totally rotted um, it allowed this section here to drop down onto this plate which is part of the 
sliding mechanism. So slide it. And part way up, about about to about there, it was catching. And if you just slightly lift it on this here, it could then carry on in and out. So if you are having an issue where you you could set you, sorry, the turntable is only coming in part way and stopping. Just check how much play you've got in this. I mean, you should be roughly flush with these areas here. And if it's very, very low, it means these rubbers have worn. Now, I've budged it at the moment with some with my plumbing kit uh, until I can try and source some of these or make some. This is the belt for the tray in out. Um, it does. It's it's perished slightly, but it's it's still usable at the moment. Uh, the belt changer on this, a um, couple of things to watch out for, there's a small spring just there, you need to take that off and if you lift off this tab, move these wires out of the way, uh, you'll see there's a, another small little spring just there, easy enough to dismantle, on the side well, first of all, obviously, take the, the clip off. Oop. Don't want to lose that. Nearly lost that. That's the tiny little spring from there. Screw there. Take that one out. Two screws on the motor. Um, careful there's a little earthing tag and that allows the motor to lift away now normally belts will be connected but obviously they're not on there now because they've perished away on this and I've picked them out and now the only thing to do is to take out take off this screw which basically he's holding that clip on it doesn't do anything else other than hold this little bit of circuit board in so put that to one side remove this screw and just be a little bit cautious there is it's a different type of screw it's self tapping sort of thing into plastic and just gently lift up this plate and then you have access now to do the belts so we can lift out the and you can do the belt that's underneath there which is ready from there onto this little wheel here the turntable belt simple enough to replace there's a small circlip just on there on the center just need to remove that just a pair of pliers or whatever I have loosened it to make it easy because these do a habit of springing off just remove that if your belt's there already just just take the pressure off it down there off the, the motor and just lift the platter and there's your belt and obviously then it's just the reverse for a reassembler that's a nice quick simple one your main problem is going to come if you need to do the slide in slide out tray one to change the tray belt this is the hard bit what you need to do is if you can just give this a very gentle push as soon as you can get your fingers in by the by the motor, start turning the motor so you can actually start to see the belt. Don't keep pushing on this because you'll just hear a ratchety noise, which is all you're doing is grinding the cogs. Next thing to do is to then lift off the belt. If you, there isn't a belt on there, you, you're fine, you can just push it forward all the way. Lift the belt off. We've done there. And now you'll find this pushes nice and gently, free and easy. And then you can take the old belt off and replace it with a new one. And that's the original belt that came off. I'll show you how it's threaded on. And that's the path for it. 
by pushing it too hard you're actually wearing the teeth out. If you hear that clicking noise that's this last cog due to the gear ratio of this basically being destroyed. So I, I try and avoid that as much as, I, as you can. And if you need be, wind it in by it with a finger. <laughs> On my belts have come. Matt at Deck Tech has kindly made you a kit. I sent him the measurements. They're based on eBay. Uh, every time I've bought a, a belt from them, really good quality. Can't think their prize is enough for that. And they sent me these as samples. It's the one mil belt fitted. Now for the joy of the other two. There's the two belts fitted. That was quite easy to do. I was expecting it to be a bit more difficult than that. Let's just get these motor screws back in. Make sure we get the earth tag. Get this plate back on. Spring back on. Let's get under there like that. There we go. Pick up the clip. Bring all these wires back over again. And get that folded over. Oh, one last thing, I forgot to put the sliding bracket spring on. And it just goes on there. And hooks over there. There we go, that's back on. Let's get this connected. There's a short connector which goes onto this side and this longer connector over to there. So it should be ready for a test now. Well, it's all wired up. Uh, let's try fast forward. That's fast forward in fine. Stop. Rewind. Play. It is playing, but I've turned the volume down because, as I said before, YouTube are quite strict on their copyright rules, uh, uh, so I've turned basically the sound off. But it is playing, I have tested it just prior to showing you, so so that's working fine. Well, I've done a few cap changes mainly around the power supply area. How many main tools are you going to need? Soldering iron, some solder, and a desoldering tool. And down here, um, it did look to be signs of leakage from these 247 microfarad caps, which I've taken theirs and changed them, and we'll do some tests on them. I have tested each of the caps that I've taken off that I've changed in the power supply, and they're still in spec and they're still with intolerance. But these two go a little bit it's weird reading on this smaller meter, so I'm going to go and test them on my bigger meter and just see if there was a problem. But that as much as I can do really. Uh, I was hoping to find something in the power supply that might have caused the zeners to go, but I can't find anything at the moment. I've traced it all through, I've put the current meter on it, uh, check the currents as it's been operating with everything plugged in, and still can't find anything that's causing the problem. So it may have just been somebody I don't know. Reverse the polarity on it for all I know, I really don't know. These are the 47 microfarad 10 volt, which looked like there was a little bit of sign of leakage around here, around here. It does look to be a little bit, I don't know if I'm zooming on that, a little bit of greenery on there. Uh, we'll go and test them on the meter and see what they read out as. Uh, that's supposed to be 47 microfarads. 
Uh, we're currently reading 24 point thing and an ASR 5.7. Let's try the other one. And that one's reading 20 microfarads. Yes, I think they're a little bit out of spec. It's more than 50%. As I don't have a power brick for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just poke a couple of wires out the back solder them onto the original terminals so if I do ever get one I can just disconnect this part of the circuit well, it's just simply a question of soldering the two wires mm. probably tin the joints I don't really want to be destroying the radio I'm gonna keep it as original as possible and of course, just disconnect those. I can get a power brick, but if not, I can just run it off an external power supply. Yeah, let's get it carry on putting it back together. Let's put this thing back together. Everything has a place to slide into. It's nice and simple. Make sure these line up before you start. And these will be my power supply leads. So I'll just have to run it up. A uh, small power supply which, which will actually drop inside there quite nice. But I, I do want to keep that original space. I need to put this piece back on. Drops into there. And it's part of the. Yeah, oh, right in there. So, get the screw on. Let's now put the cassette back in. There's the cassette module. And connect the two wires. Terminal blocks rather. Right, I think, that's, I think we'll give it a test now. I've decided to do the FM alignment procedure on this because I think somebody's been in here with a screw. There's a um, man adjustment there, this T101. They've been screwed all the way to the bottom. The FM sounded really, really bad on this. Um, the stereo indication it wasn't working at all. The uh, lower 88 meg and the 108 meg weren't in the right place. So it's a bit awkward to do with this unit because it'd be nice if they'd have done a little cutout on the top here so you could get to all these adjustments I mean presuming the factory <laughs> they've probably got one of these with a cutout so when it's all assembled they can test it but uh, there's only three parts based well four one two three and um, four there that need to be adjusted for the FM not interested in doing medium wave long wave there's no more stations anymore uh, so I just followed basically the procedure it states in here it doesn't give any values to feed into it uh, it's just purely adjustment wise and I've decided to use my tiny SA Ultra and basically I've set it to 108 megahertz the best I can get out of this is minus 18 dB uh, 1 kilohertz FM deviation modulation sorry um, and what I've done that from the output of that I've fed that through into this minimum loss pad which converts 50 ohms to 75 ohms and then just into an isolation transformer which converts 75 ohms to 300 ohms for the uh, radio input then obviously we've I put it all back together set the dial to ADA brought it all back out then it's just a question of doing some adjustments and if I turn this on there I don't know if you can hear that tone that sees the uh, 108 meg and just free go off frequency and back on that took a little bit of setting of the, the variables that it, it's does it recommends that you adjust on the sheet and the same, obviously, then rotate it to 
80, uh, 88 meg and do the same again for that 88 meg turn the modulation on uh, there you go you can hear it there so we've got the range right now we've got the we've got the FM indication working just by following the uh, the, the, the recommendation it says on here by putting a signal um, frequency counter onto, onto some test pins which are down there I'm not going to show you how to do all this on the on this radio because it's so awkward to do uh, the next radio I'll do I'll, I'll do a better explanation of what I'm actually doing and I'll dig the scope out as well at the moment I've just done it by here uh, next job before I put it back together is the tape head demagnetizer Oh, it's reassembly time. Let's get the deck back on. I slightly left the deck out a little bit just to help me. Make the one I need to put that ribbon cable back on. We've got three screws to put in there. And then just that ribbon cable to put on just there. Got the wire in. Last thing to do is put this back on. And simply just clips it into there. Then I strongly suggest you give it a test before you do any more. Well, we'll put it all back together other than the front. Uh, so I just thought we'd give it a quick test just to make sure. FM's working fine. Uh, if we select phono, uh, bring them out. Oh, wet all day for that. Apply. Volume's at zero. So on. Yep, that's working fine. Uh, turn that off. Just stick a tape in. I'll just clamp that back off. Send him back in. Gonna hold it in. We're on tape. Volume at zero. Play. Yep, that's working fine. Let's get the front on. I find it easier to put it on its back. Let's do this. <laughs> Make sure the cassette door's open. And it's just a question there again, are these all lined up? That's all in. Don't forget this most important screw. The one goes in the cassette mechanism. And then you've got your three screws at the bottom. Put the tuning knob back on. Oh, I think I'll clean that first. And the same with that one. These two larger screws at the rear. And again, I find it easier with this. To its front, just put something underneath there. That's unusual, they went in quite easily. Oh, it's all back together, one of the nice things they do for you. If you look into the back of the unit where the brick would normally be, just there, there's a small cutout where you can adjust the motor speed for the cassette player, which is quite nice. So just the turntable speed, when you eject this out, just underneath here, there's two small screws, which you can adjust them for the uh, 45 and 33. JVC, DC 33L, fully functional now, fully repaired. What it now needs is somebody to take it on now and do a little bit of renovation and cleaning it all up. I actually like the old patina, but yeah, it's all fully working. 
totally portable. A little bit heavy for it. Detachable speakers. Does the job. The cassette works fine. The tray loading works fine on that. Radio's working. The only thing we haven't got is any AM. Uh, but I don't think there's any stations left anymore in the UK. But other than that, it's another one safe from the skip. And it just as I say, just now it just needs a good little clean really. Uh, I might I might take the speaker grills off, meshes and clean the inside of the speakers. But it sounds okay to be honest for what it is. Well I hope that helped. Uh, if anybody's got one of these.